Gamma spectroscopy is fun. Recently I set out trying to build a small compact gamma spectroscopy driver like this one here. Um, initially my quest actually was to see if I could modify a rate meter to handle gamma spectroscopy. Uh, it turns out with the rate meter I chose it was a little bit trickier. I won't go into the reasons why but it turned out that um, it would just be easier to create a separate unit, a separate driver that could then be hooked up to the output of the rate meter and spit out the pulses through a separate audio jack. Um, so I created this small black box which is a full-fledged and half-decent maybe gamma spectroscopy driver. Uh, on one side is the high voltage input, on the other side you connect the probe, on this side is the output and the power switch which if you flip it lights up an LED. It's not very pretty and it basically just serves as a proof of concept. I wanted to see if it was possible so I threw together something. And if we remove the four screws that hold on the top of the enclosure we can open that up and see that inside we firstly see a very large 9 volt battery. This is not very efficient space wise as the battery is practically half the size of the uh, gamma spectroscopy driver itself. Um, there are other options of course, I just chose to use this because I found it easiest and we can sort of pull out the battery from here and we see the electronics underneath. I've now taken away the 9 volt battery so it's easier to see. One thing you can notice immediately is the two B and C connectors on the outside. Um, one drawback with this unit is that it's not symmetrical, meaning we have to have the high voltage coming in on one side and the probe has to be connected to the other side, otherwise it won't work correctly. And on the inside we can see two beige uh, circuit boards, you could call them. This one on the side is a filter that is supposed to filter the high voltage from any ripple or noise it might have which might impact our performance gathering spectrums. Uh, and then at the bottom here you can see a black op amp and uh, some other resistors and capacitors. That is the uh, signal processing I guess you could call it. It's where the magic happens. It's where the signal gets amplified a little bit and then passed out through this 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the side. Um, this other blue board in here is just a cheap pre-made um, voltage regulator. It just uh, switches down the 9 volts from the battery to 5 volts which I use for the op amp circuit. Um, I wouldn't need this if I had made this the circuit differently but um, the way it worked out I just used it but I'm sure it would be possible to make it work without that regulator. I will now demonstrate how to use this uh, gamma spectrometry driver using a Ludlum Model 2 as well as a sodium iodide simulation detector that I built in a previous video actually, my first video. Um, so the first thing you want to do is hook up the driver itself to the Ludlum. So a BNC, a short BNC cable from the detector itself to the high voltage part of the driver like that and then another BNC cable from the driver to the detector like so and then a USB sound card plug into a laptop and then a 3.5 millimeter audio cable from the output to the microphone in on the USB sound card like so and then all that you want to do is turn on the rate meter. I'll set it to just the battery check option uh, as the high voltage is still being generated at that setting. 
and then I'll switch on the supply and you'll see a LED light up and that means we are good to go. So we can move to the computer. And then on the computer we open uh, any multi-channel analyzer software. In this case I'm using Theramino MCA. Um, that is my preferred MCA as of now. And select the correct audio input. And if you've done everything right you can just press record and you'll start recording a spectrum. And let me get a cesium-137 source and place it next to the detector. And we should see a peak start to form. There we go. And as you can see, we're getting a big, nice cesium-137 peak. It's not perfectly calibrated, but it is nevertheless a very clear peak. So I'll demonstrate it now with some other sources. Now we've got the same setup, but I switch to americium 241 and we can immediately see that the spectrum looks different. Let me zoom in and we can clearly see two peaks from the americium. Now I have some natural uranium ore. This is uraninite and um, I'm running with the same setup. But here we can see one of the limitations of this uh, gamma spectroscopy driver. We can see that the highest energy it's able to show in the spectrum is around, in my case, 1000 keV. This is not much at all, and this is a big issue for this um, setup. The reason for this is, um, I've deduced, is a saturation of the amplifier in the uh, driver itself. So what you would need to do to get over this energy is lower the voltage coming from the rate meter and um, often that's not very difficult to do. Besides 800 volts is probably a little bit too much for uh, this scintillation detector. I usually run it around uh, I think 650. I get the best results. Okay so now I switch to some thorium. I'm measuring thorium with the same setup and we can see a pretty nice thorium spectrum except for the same issue we had with the uraninite which is that we aren't getting above 1000 keV. I'm sure it would be possible to fix this issue by switching the op amp or maybe doing some other kind of alteration to the circuit. And if you were curious if you can see any counts on the detector itself, the answer is no. The uh, driver does not allow the detector to count parallel to it being connected. So uh, I'm not seeing any counts per minute at all on the Ludlum Model 2. So another benefit with having the driver separate from the rate meter is that you can choose pretty much any high voltage source. So I could use it with uh, my Bicron Surveyor M, I could use it with my Ludlum Model 2, or I could use it with any other thing that spits out around six to nine hundred volts in my case. So in conclusion, I guess this driver is uh, very compact and it generates some really decent spectrums. Uh, I could see myself using this maybe on the go somewhat uh, as it's completely battery driven. If you have a laptop that has a battery and a rate meter that has a battery obviously. Um, and I think it could be useful for me at least in several situations. Um, if I were to try to get a really nice spectrum I would probably use my other gamma spectrometry driver um, but as a compact portable uh, quick way to take a spectrum I would probably go to this driver that I've made and I hope I have given enough information so that if you want to build one you could probably find similar parts and try it yourself. Um, thank you for watching this video.